I see that vector databases are a natural evolution of the NoSQL class of databases. Um, I, if, if you imagine a Venn diagram, you have like a circle that represents SQL and the other circle represents NoSQL. You have an intersection. Um, that intersection point, I believe they're called new SQL now. I'm not sure if you come across that term. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's quite interesting, but um, new SQL, they technically use SQL like languages, but they also claim horizontal scalability and a bunch of other things related to asset compliance and all the other things. So it marries the benefits of both SQL and NoSQL paradigms. I was thinking initially, where do I place vector databases? Does it go in that intersection or does it sit purely in the NoSQL camp? Then I imagine this as you extend that circle that has NoSQL, it becomes like a blob, like a fuzzy amorphous blob. NoSQL is huge. <laughs> and I think I, in my head, vector databases are like um, an extension to NoSQL. And why they came about uh, to understand what vectors are and how they're stored in databases. I think it, it's important to understand what search is and what essentially you're doing when you query a NoSQL database. So where it comes from is in the early days, I guess uh, people were just submitting an exact query uh, using a JSON sort of query language like how MongoDB has. And that query has to have all the terms or parameters in there that tell you what you want to fetch from the database, right? Uh, in, in a SQL world, it will be done with a declarative query in SQL, whereas in NoSQL, you typically do it in JSON. Over time, I think, the idea of full text search became very important because I think everyone wants to be able to retrieve information from massive blobs of data sitting around. Uh, and how do you query that, right? If it's in a NoSQL sort of format, if it's not, you can't write a SQL query to retrieve it, how do you get that information? So the idea of a full text index came about. And what, what essentially that is, is um, it uses a concept of inverted indexes, inverted file indexes, sorry where you consider the term frequencies of terms that appear in a certain document and obviously the relative frequency of how often those terms exist in a document versus the entire data set. So you combine all those things together, similar to how TFIDF is in data science. Uh, there's an algorithm called BM25, which is the most popular uh, inverted file index algorithm. Um, it, it, it's the most commonly used one for full text search. So. The, the early days of search involved, how do you scale that up? Because you have massive amounts of data, how do you build that index very, very efficiently? Uh, and then the querying interface sits on top of that. So you essentially submit uh, a query saying, okay, I want so-and-so term in, in, in the keyword that you put in. And the inverted file index, the BM25 algorithm, it considers the words frequency and it considers subword features and a bunch of other things to intelligently retrieve relevant documents that contain that term, while, while also throwing out, you know, uh, useless words, stop words, and things like that. So it was more of like a bag of words sort of approach. If you consider an NLP analogy, it's kind of like a bag of words way of approaching the text. Now, fast forward a few years, I think ever since the transformer revolution happened, uh, people began observing the obvious, obvious power of transformers in encoding semantics, right? A transformer is way better at isolating meaningful terms in a document, especially when, when you're doing things like classification, retrieval, and so on. How could you ma uh, merge those benefits of a transformer with uh, uh, what you have in a database? So I think vector databases, uh, th the term got coined, I think, much later after transformers came about. Um, it, it was mostly called search engines before that, uh, a more generic term, I think a catch-all term for anything that involves search. But nowadays, I believe search engine refers to a more like you consider semantics as a key component. So essentially vectors are the only thing that can do that. So, so to really uh, describe what the a vector is, essentially you have a language model, typically a transformer based language model that you use to embed the representation of a sentence into tokens and, and the representation is stored as a vector. Uh, the vector that you have essentially for a particular sentence, typically those are done using sentence transformers, which is the most common kind of model you use. That essentially uh, embeds the entire semantics of that sentence in the vector. And then the way this scales up is you consider the uh, context of each and every token in that vector in a way that when you submit a query, the, the meaning or the semantics of the query are mapped to the vector in your database and you can find a similarity between what you you, you enter as a query and what exists in the data. So, so the, a vector is a very powerful way of, you could say, compressing the representation of meaning in a, in a sentence or a document in a way that scales up numerically 
and you can rapidly query that in, in a digital form.